How's it going guys? Welcome back. For all of you guys that are new, I wanna give my channel a quick reintroduction. My name is Brandon and this is my 2022 Hyundai Elantra N. Now on my channel, I do some install videos and mostly we just talk about cars. And today's video is not gonna be much different. We're gonna be talking a lot about the Elantra N. I got my first performance modification on the way. We're gonna be doing some rear motor mount bushings. I'll be installing them for you guys on video as well as showing you the difference before and after. So I'm hoping to get some good zero to 60 testing done for you guys here very shortly once those arrive. And then I also got some cosmetic items coming for the car. Now, I know everything I've done to the car so far is cosmetic. Everything's pretty subtle so far. What I got coming for it is gonna be affecting a lot of the way the vehicle looks all the way around. So I'm excited to show you guys that once that arrives. And then we also got to talk about some of your questions. I asked you guys to ask me some questions about the vehicle or just questions in general. So we'll be going over those here later on in the video. But for now, I know what you guys came here for is to watch the Elantra N versus the Kia Stinger GT. So I'll show you guys that clip right now. How fast? Tell me when. Thank you to Joseph for sending us that clip. He's a subscriber of the channel. And on his Elantra N, he's got a stage four JB4 tune with an E30 mix. And that Kia Stinger GT was completely bone stock. Now, I'm not too shocked that the Elantra N pulled on the Kia Stinger just because I've seen those two stock head to head and the Elantra N holds its, holds its own pretty well against a Kia Stinger GT. Now, I wanna know what you guys think. Leave your comments below. And if you guys have your clips that you wanna send in to me and you want me to feature them on the channel, I'd be glad to do so for you guys. With that being said, let's hear a quick word from today's video sponsor. Element Wheels has thousands of different wheel options for your car or truck extremely fast shipping times, and great pricing. They also have a fitment guide where you can select your vehicle to know which wheels will work with your car, and they also have a fitment guarantee. They offer financing, warranties on all of their products via Extend, text and email notifications to track your products, and even shipping insurance for only 1% of the cost of your order. Check out elementwheels.com today, and also use my code ENTENSE50 to save $50 on your next order of wheels. All right, now we're gonna move on to some of the questions that you guys had for me and for the Elantra N. I had a recent community post where I asked you guys to ask me some questions, and I'll definitely do this again in the future because I enjoy answering your guys' questions for you. Um, I can give a little bit more of a detailed answer when I'm doing it on video rather than just replying to you in the comments. So let's get right to it. I'm gonna read through some of the comments that I had on the community post. I'm just gonna go through them in order the way I see them, and I'll answer them the best that I can. The first question here is from Brandon. Brandon asked, what were your dimensions for wheels and tires? Um, if we're talking about the aftermarket ones that I just got, I got 18 by eight. Uh, the tires I got are 245, 4018s. Um, I went with something that was, for me, as close to stock as possible. Um, I didn't want any rubbing or any issues. I didn't want to go super wide on the tire. It's not necessary, especially for the winter time. If you're asking about the stock ones, those are 245, 35, 19s. You also asked what sizes do you know fit and don't fit. Uh, I'm unsure of all of them, but I have seen some people go uh, like 18 by nine. I think I've even seen a 19 by nine, but those are really wide and you're gonna have a lot of issues probably with rubbing. So I wouldn't recommend going that wide personally, but I think I've seen it done. Um, also 18 by like eight and a half or 19 by eight and a half is definitely gonna be a lot safer. 17s, you can't really put 17s on this car as far as I'm aware. Um, I know they fit on the back tires, but they, they do not clear the front brakes. Um, you could also go a seven and a half inch wide wheel um, if you're looking for maybe like a spare tire to put in your trunk, but I wouldn't recommend it for daily driving. And then Agent K here was asking, does the DCT limit the power when you put it in manual mode? I don't believe so. I don't think there's anything about that on the car that says it's gonna limit the power when you're putting it in manual mode. However, I believe that if you keep it just in the general automatic mode and without putting it in the, the paddle shifter mode, I think you're gonna get the highest performance. The car is smart enough to know when it should or should not shift or downshift. And if you wanna play around with it to where you get it at the lowest gear possible, just hold down on the left paddle when you're driving and it'll automatically put it in the lowest gear possible if you're looking for those higher RPMs or maybe you're just looking to get the exhaust to pop a little bit more. Danny here is asking, what does it cost to insure this? It's actually not that expensive, or at least it wasn't that expensive for me. 
Over time, my insurance has actually dropped a little bit. Um, between this and my 2021 Kia Sorento X line, I only pay about 130, 133 a month for both cars, fully covered of course, but that's gonna depend on where you are, how old you are, what's your driving record look like. Um, I'm in my mid thirties, I'm 36, and I have a really clean driving record and so does my fiance. And uh, I feel that we get pretty good rates because of that. Abdul Raham here was asking if the car comes with a 1.6 or a 2.0. It only comes with the 2.0 liter turbo. And that's the same for the Veloster N and the Kona N. And Quinn's asking if it's faster than a 2014 Hyundai Genesis 2.0 turbo. Absolutely it is. Um, if you look at some of the numbers based on it, when it was stock, um, that car should be running a high to high 13, maybe low 14, where the Elantra, and especially if you get the DCT model, you're looking at a lower 13 in the quarter mile. That's bone stock, nothing touched to it. But if you do get the manual version of the Elantra, and you're probably looking in the mid to high 13s in the quarter mile, um, and more of a similar zero to 60 time. I believe the zero to 60 on that one was more of a mid fives to higher fives, so maybe like 5.5 to 5.8 which I would agree is probably something pretty similar to the manual Elantra N. The DCT model, you'll probably get lower fives and you could potentially crack into the four seconds, uh, like 4.8, 4.9 on a zero to 60 time with the DCT. And G Chris is asking if I'm gonna tune the car. I definitely plan on it. And when I do, I'd be glad to share everything about it with you guys. So that'll probably be coming in the springtime. I am definitely giving the whole I guess market a little bit of time to see what becomes available. I'm not 100% sold on anything. Um, if anything, maybe the six tune stands out to me just because they seem like the most reliable. They also have great customer service. So I'm looking forward to potentially working with them in the future. But I live in a cold climate. I live up here in Michigan and it's about to be winter time here very soon. So there's no point in really doing that right now. Um, I, I've looked at a lot of options, whether it's JB4 or other piggyback tunes and I, don't think I want to do that. I've just seen some bad things happen to other vehicles and I've seen some flaws with the Elantra N as well. So I'm just, I'm being as patient as I possibly can, but I definitely plan on doing it. I definitely plan on taking this car to the track a lot more next year once they do get more performance modifications done to it. But another thing is my car, I still only have 2,500 miles on the car guys. And I, I put it in February. So here we are eight months later and I've only put 2,500 miles on it. And that's because I took one long trip. Otherwise I'd still probably be under 2,000. So I don't drive it a whole lot. I also don't live too far away from where I work. But going back to your question, yes, I do plan on tuning it. And when it does happen, I'd be glad to share all of that process with you guys and tell you where I get it from and do an install video and everything once we do get that in. Uh, Realm here wants to know if I get any negative attention for the exhaust being loud and the popping and all that. I would say no for the most part. I definitely get a lot of heads turning looking at the car, but uh, I mean, it's just fun to drive that way. There's no doubt about it. I do have it in normal mode quite often now when I'm driving to and from work, um, but it's hard not to put it in end mode. It's just way too fun. The car is way too fast and exciting to be driving on a daily drive. And uh, I can't help myself sometimes by putting it in end mode. I'm sure most of you guys do too that own the car. Um, but uh, unless you live in California, apparently, because you'll get arrested and thrown in jail uh, for, for having it in end mode. But uh, yeah, goodness, that, that was crazy. Um, and any of you guys that watch that video that are not normal viewers of my channel and you're watching this, especially to this point, I appreciate you for being here. And all of my normal viewers as well, I appreciate you coming back. Uh, Zach, your question wants a stock wheel offset. The stock wheel offset is 55. Grant, I appreciate you asking this question because I definitely wanted to bring this up for a lot of you guys that might be coming back to this video just to try to get more information about that. I don't have anything yet, but I am in contact with the owner. So hopefully once more of that uh, comes about, I'd be glad to give you guys more information. I'll make another video probably uh, pertaining to that alone, just so that way we can go over any, any more details uh, and try to figure out that whole debacle. Hey Gary, great question. Um, I have not done the res delete on mine, but I've seen a lot of videos on it. And from my perspective, it's just a little bit too loud for my taste. I do still try to be a little bit respective to my, to my neighbors in general. Um, but I think for the ones that have done it, I don't think I've ever heard them say they regret it just because they are the ones that are looking for that little bit extra noise out of the exhaust, even though I feel that it doesn't need it. Um, it, it, they've said it, it's still quiet in eco and normal mode, but it's definitely louder in sport and end mode. Uh, to me, it's just loud enough, but I don't think you'll regret it if you're looking for something a little bit louder. 
Taco Warrior, great question. Uh, Sonata N-Line or Elantra N? Um, I think there's two different categories for these cars. The Elantra N is more of a compact performance daily driver that is just gonna put a smile on your face every time you drive it, where the Sonata N-Line probably has a little bit more of a luxurious feel, uh, might be a little bit more comfortable, but while it does have a lot of power, that car does tend to struggle to put the power to the ground. Um, I know the Elantra N has some wheel hop issues, but that can be pretty easily fixed where uh, the Sonata N-Line is a pretty big vehicle and with, uh, I believe those put out uh, 280 to 290 horsepower, um, also front wheel drive, but those just spin from what I've seen. They, they don't put the power to the ground. I'm not sure if it's the tires or just the drivetrain. I don't believe it has an LSD. Um, so it's really gonna come down to you. Do you want comfort? Do you want performance? Do you want uh, you know maybe more of a fun daily driving experience or do you want something a little bit more of a, a comfortable, laid back, maybe more luxurious feel? And Bill Nye here is asking, are we really pushing 275 horsepower? Yes, to the wheels we are. So that means at the crank we're pushing 310, 320. Um, but yes, absolutely we are. And that's whether you have the DCT or the manual transmission. The DCT has proven to be a little bit more powerful and a little bit more quicker from the factory. However, a tune will probably eradicate that and help you get a little bit more power out of the manual transmission version, but definitely. Uh, so it, there's been a, a handful of dynos that have proven that it's pushing 275 to 280 at the wheels, giving this car somewhere between 310 to 330 horsepower at the crank. And our last question here from Aaron, this is a great question. If you're looking to drive this car daily, what kind of miles per gallon are you going to see out of this? Now, if you are on the highway, I can guarantee you that you're gonna be getting anywhere from 30 to even 38 miles per gallon on this. Just keep it in normal mode, keep it in eco mode if you wanna get a little bit of extra miles per gallon, but you can definitely get good gas mileage on this car. If you're light on the pedal, just keep it out of end mode, keep it out of sport mode, and just put it in normal or eco and cruise. And on my most recent trip to Cleveland, there and back, I averaged about 37 to 38 miles per gallon just by keeping it in cruise and you could definitely get good gas mileage. Now, as far as daily driving, eh, probably low 20s is probably my average at least, sometimes a little bit lower um, because I do a lot of city driving and uh, you know tend to get on the gas here and there. So for the most part, that's all for today's video. I wanna hear from you guys. I wanna know what you guys wanna see in the future with the car. I know you guys probably wanna see more racing and zero to 60 times and all that. And I'll do that the best that I can. I'm just, I'm a busy guy and I don't have any friends around here, so I don't really have anybody to go out and do videos with and race against, and I really don't know a lot of people in my area in general. Um, but if you guys have any questions, please leave a comment below. Leave your thoughts and opinions about that short race clip that we watched earlier, and uh, leave a like if you enjoyed today's video. Uh, of course, subscribe if you haven't already. I know it's a pretty low percentage of you guys that are subscribed to the channel, but that also has a lot to do with the fact that a ton of you guys watched my most recent video about that California cop pulling over that guy and uh, it was just atrocious but I'll try to get you guys an update on that as soon as I can um, but again that's all for today's video I hope you guys have a good one I'll see you next time